Hello, my name is Dr. Shah and I'm the founding attorney of the Dr. Lawyer Law Group. We're a law firm dedicated to the victims of medical malpractice, wrongful death, and catastrophic personal injury. Today I want to take a moment and discuss with you a serious medical topic, and that is caudi equini syndrome. Caudi equini in Latin means horse's tail, and it refers to a specific segment of the spinal cord in humans. I have with me a model of the spinal column, and I'd like to use it to help illustrate exactly where the caudi equina is. So when the spinal cord exits out of the skull and down into the column of the spine, it begins as one solid cord. Here, the blue illustrates the thoracic vertebra and the red illustrate the lumbar vertebra. So it remains a solid column, a solid cord, until about the level of L2, the second red spinal segment that you see here. And it's at that level that the spinal cord begins to split into a series of smaller spinal roots and spinal segments. And the appearance of that is like a horse's tail, hence the term in Latin caudae equini. So what's so special about this portion of the spine? Well, the caudae equini, in other words, from lumbar L2 on down, is particularly vulnerable to compression. If anything compresses it, catastrophic injury can result. So if a patient has caudae equini syndrome, how do they typically present? Well, classically, these patients will present with numbness and tingling of the buttock and pelvis area. So if a patient comes into an ER and tells a competent clinician that I'm having numbness and tingling involving really my pelvic area and my buttocks, then that should be a red flag for the possibility of caudae equini syndrome. Another critical manifestation of caudae equini syndrome is bowel or bladder incontinence. So if the patient is complaining of any difficulties, either making urine or passing urine, or making stool or passing stool, that should also be pause for concern. And the third is that the patient will complain of pain involving the pelvis and the buttocks, and occasionally even both legs all the way down to the feet. So if a patient presents with this constellation of signs and symptoms, a competent clinician must be prepared to rule out the possibility of caudi equini syndrome because it is a surgical emergency and a delay in its prompt recognition and treatment can go on to cause catastrophic injury. And we'll talk about that a little bit more. Now, what are some of the causes of caudi equini syndrome? Well, overwhelmingly, the most common cause is a massive lumbar disc herniation. Let's go back to the model. So the area in red here, the segments in red are your lumbar vertebra. And in between each lumbar vertebra is this relatively clear piece, and this is representing a disc. If one of these discs herniates and thereby causes a compressive effect on the caudae equini, well, that can cause caudae equini syndrome. But there are other causes that a competent clinician has to be on the lookout for that can trigger caudae equini syndrome. It can be a spinal tumor or other growth within the spinal column that can also exert the same compressive effect. So can a bleed. So if there's a, a vessel that ruptures, one of the more common ones is something known as an AV malformation, arteriovenous malformation. If a blood vessel like that ruptures and causes an accumulation of blood in the area around the caudae equini, it can cause that compressive effect and that can trigger caudae equini syndrome. And finally, Every competent clinician must keep in mind that an infection of the spinal column, an infection of the spinal cord, or the lining around it can also trigger caudae equini syndrome. So, because it is such a surgical emergency when a patient presents with caudae equini syndrome, safety rules require that there be at least four critical questions that a competent clinician must ask of a patient who presents with that constellation of symptoms that we talked about. The first is, are you experiencing any bladder incontinence or dysfunction? If the patient says, I can't make urine or I can't control the passage of urine, well, that's a red flag. The second critical question that a patient has to be asked is, are you experiencing any bowel incontinence or bowel dysfunction? If the patient has lost the ability to control the excretion of stool, that is another red flag for the possibility of caudae equini syndrome. The next question that has to be asked 
is are you experiencing numbness in the area involving your pelvis or your buttocks? If it's a male patient, an additional question that has to be asked is are you having any difficulties initiating or maintaining an erection or are you having any difficulties with ejaculation? And then finally, the fourth critical question that has to be asked is are you experiencing any significant pain involving the pelvic area or the buttocks or is the pain bilateral, in other words, involves both of the legs and goes all the way down? If a clinician doesn't ask these questions, there's a much higher possibility that this devastating diagnosis of cauda equini syndrome can be missed. So what happens if we miss this diagnosis? Well, if there's a delay in surgical treatment of this condition, it will go on to cause permanent paralysis. In some instances, patients have lost the ability to control anything below the waist. So they lose control of their legs, they lose control of their bowels, they lose control of their bladder. In other words, a devastating series of complications will develop if this diagnosis is missed. If you or a loved one has been diagnosed or has been delayed in the diagnosis of cauda equini syndrome, you owe it to yourself to call the Dr. Lawyer Law Group and have your potential medical malpractice case fully evaluated.